Welcome back everyone. Today I want to count down the top 10 worst songs of 2023. 2023 was an odd year for hit music. It wasn't a bad year, but not a good one either. But one genre that made headway was country. But I think the bad of the country outweighed the good in country thanks to one person who is making this list. But if you don't know my rules, here are my rules. The song had to be released between November 2022 and November 2023. Since that's when the Billboard year started, you must appear within the top 50 of the Billboard Hot 100, regardless if you make the year end list or not. So with that being said, let's take a look at the top 10 songs that I thought were the worst of this year. Before we begin, if you want to see music bios or more good videos like this, hit the subscribe button. And without further ado, on to our feature presentation. Number 10. One of the risks of releasing too much music in one year, you get exposed to some of the bad side of your art. And I think Taylor Swift knows what I mean. Let me also say Taylor Swift isn't the worst part of this song, but I Spice on the other hand is. The original version was already mid, and I Spice made a mid song worse. For one, her ad libs and her Comment verses feels out of place, me. it doesn't add, and she nor Swift have any chemistry. I kind of get the feeling Comment that this collab was for forced. Me. Swifty, you're not getting out of this easy either because I don't like how bratty your course sounds. All in all, I just wish she didn't release this as a single. She could have just pushed Maroon or continued to build on Lavender Haze. All I'll say. Number 9. This might be the worst rap song of 2023. Like most of our rappers that sound to the streets, only dealers we took was a plea. Mambu and money. If you don't know who Lil Mambu is, he's a high school graduate prick who cosplays as a drill rapper without any characteristics of drill rapping. In his song, if you want to call it that, he makes lines that he isn't a snitch but will rat to cops. He also makes a very disrespectful line involving the late Virgil. And he stops the song midway to explain that red and blue makes purple. Barney the Purple Dinosaur can do a better job in explaining that. This would be higher on my list. Luckily the song is barely two minutes and even he acknowledges that we don't have the time nor the day to entertain his music and it only peaked at 47. Folks, let's not give Lil Mabu a career. Let's leave him behind and ignore all of his outputs. Number 8. This song is only here on Disappointment. This is not WAP 2.0, a song that I enjoy more than you think. I feel like this song was rushed and the chemistry with Megan and Cardi isn't the same. And fun fact, both parties admit on recording the song in different settings. The whole bong in the background got annoying very fast, but I'll give them this. Cardi rapping in Spanish in the end wasn't bad, and the visuals were fine. All in all, I'm just disappointed in this one, because this song could have been so much better. Just saying. Number 7 In 2023, we did get an R&B renaissance to some point, but I don't think this song was in the right direction. But it is hope, what's up? Every good girl needs a little Listen, I like Dochi, sort of, but this song is mostly here due to Kodak Black, who last year I gave his song Super Gremlin a slight pass. But here he can't stay on beat and portrays the block boy Dochi refers. Then there's the interpolation of Some Cut by Trillville, a song that does represent my childhood, but aged pretty bad years later. I just wish Dochi would have left Kodak Black off this song, and if she would have pushed the solo version, this song would have been left off this list. Gotta say it. Number 6 I was giving someone a ride the other day and this song came up on the radio and after the song went off, he said, wow, this song is terrible and I couldn't agree with them more. Okay, who's David Kushner? He's a singer from Chicago of all places. He started to promote his music on TikTok. He put out an EP in 2022 and it did numbers internationally. But in 2023, Daylight served as his American breakthrough. 
Let me also clarify that none of the issues with the song involves his Christian beliefs, as my biggest issue with the song might be David Kushner himself. I know it was the course that went viral on TikTok, but for me, I don't like how the layering is done. If you care about the content of this song, it's basically a toxic relationship jam. All in all, it's a song that's messy when it shouldn't be. Number 5 I always feel like Drake finds a way to make this list. Mommy, come and, rescue me. Well, take me. and it's sad because I'm running out of bad things to say about Drake. He doesn't seem engaged with this song, which has been an issue with him since 2020. And in his song, I see he's trying to ask this girl to rescue him, but yet he wants to control her and buy her stuff. But the part of the song that really pissed me off was the Kim Kardashian sample. It's like, why is this here? Apparently to stir up his ongoing petty beef with Kanye, it makes the song more out of place than it already is. Last year, I wish Drake would just go away, but I know it's not going to happen. Let's just move on. Number 4 I know that last night we let the liquor talk. I can't remember. In 2023, we got way too much Morgan Wallen. And while last night was the biggest single of the year, it didn't make this list. It barely escaped. But one of his album cuts did. You say some more, he's drinking, are you thinking about me? When you're riding where he's driving, are you? I could easily copy paste everything I said about you proof last year and it would validate my point. Like you proof, he uses a trap beat as he croons about missing this girl and being concerned about her after she moved on, just like you should with this song. It's the type of crap Drake pulls off on a regular basis. It's not cowgirls, you proof, wasted on you, but it's up there as one of Morgan Wallen's worst songs of all time. Next, number three. In all honesty, I forgot this song existed. Here we have a disgusting sex jam that's badly produced. Need I say more? I think this song is more comically bad than outright bad. I will read some of the lines of the song, but they're too profane for this channel, so leave well enough alone. But like Lil Mabu, I guess NLE Choppa was reaching for a reaction and he knew that this was bad. But again, disgusting male misogyny will not work for me on this platform. Let's move on. Number 2 and speaking of disgusting male misogyny, if you don't know who Young Nudie is, he's 21 Savage cousin, and this was his breakthrough song. The only thing I can remember from this song is the boop, 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 boop. The song is very disgusting. It's basically a sex jam. Young Nudie can't rap and makes a P reference. 21 Savage, he sells menace and maybe R&B, but he cannot sell sex at all. He seems checked out. And in the remix, doesn't make this any better, with Sexy Red wanting her man to nut all over her, ew. And Lotto's verse is just clumsy and almost hilariously bad. Overall, the song is disgusting, gross, and very disrespectful. Next! Before I unveil my top pick, here are a few dishonorable mentions. I could have my Gucci on. I go in my Louis. This was the return of Megan Trainer that nobody asked for. I can buy myself flowers. Write my name and say. This was one of the biggest hits of the year. It never moved the needle for me. Sorry. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Copy paste everything I said about I'm good blue, but with lazier sampling. To me, you body lie, to me. He better be counting his lucky stars that this did not qualify for this list. And until Billboard fixes its holiday recurrent rules, this song will land here every year. Before we continue, if you like what you see, go ahead and hit the like button. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well. And now, let's continue with the video. Number 1 I've tried avoid reviewing this song where things could get messy and maybe political, which is a cardinal sin on my channel. So if you want to skip this section of the video, tell me what you think in the comments below. 
Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time. I don't blame you. As for the rest of you who chose to stay, the song that tops my list, let's just say he earned this spot. So it is clear I am not a fan of Jason Aldean. The one song I'm acquainted with him was his duet with Carrie Underwood back in 2021 that was severely overplayed in Nashville radio. So what about this song? Let's just get the backlash out of the way first. Many people called this song out for its anti-protest, anti-Black Lives Matter, and pro-lynching sentiments because of him picking the courthouse where a black boy was lynched back in 1927. Luckily, I don't identify as a liberal or a conservative, so I have the right to point out that the production's all crap. He couldn't come up with a guitar solo, so he jacked the Beat It solo from Eddie Van Halen. I could point out that he's not even from a small town, as I don't consider making Georgia small. I could point out that he didn't even wrote this, and whoever did came up with some very vague verses. Then you get to the video, which mostly shows protests from Black Lives Matter movement back in 2020, and notice how he only showed them and not the thugs from January 6th. But the song shows off a lack of sincerity, and this only debuted high because of those sales and the reactions from particularly everyone left to right. And whether you agree or not with this sentiment, this tune gave country one big black eye. And as for me, a song like this goes no further. And yes, this is easily the worst song of 2023. Tell me what y'all think in the comments below. What do you think was the worst song of that year? Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Try that